Newton's second law is often written in uh, one way. A lot of people write it like this, F equals MA. But I want to point out a few things about this. This is not entirely true, not always at least. First of all, it's a net force that's equal to MA. In other words, this has to be an unbalanced force. That's the key thing here, okay? That force that's unbalanced is related to the acceleration of an object. Uh, and it, of course, depends on the mass as well. So if you know the mass of the object uh, and you want to know its acceleration, you can figure that out by first figuring out what's the unbalanced force. So right now, again, the boring example of me standing here, there is no unbalanced force because there is a balanced force. Sounds a bit silly, but the forces right now acting on me, the upwards and the downwards forces, are canceling each other out, so the net force is zero. But in this case right here, if we have an unbalanced force, in other words, we have a net force that's not zero, then we can actually relate it to the acceleration. But a better way to write uh, Newton's second law is actually this. So we can actually say that uh, F equals delta P delta T. This, I think, is the better way to write it. Now this one right here, P, is momentum. And that's actually measured in um, kilograms meters per second. And T is, of course, the time. And that's measured in seconds. And of course, the force is just measured in newtons, as usual. Okay, so the force, F equals the force in newtons. Now, the momentum is something we're going to talk about uh, in a coming video. So that's just m times v. In other words, the momentum is just the uh, mass times the speed. That's how I knew that the units were going to be kilogram meters per second. See, I'm not actually that clever. It's just because I know that P equals mv. So I know those units. So this is a better way to write it. However, this is a useful way still. So I'm going to give you an example because uh, that always helps to put things into perspective. Um, so here I'm going to give an example of something where there are some forces acting on, I guess, me. And we're going to look at um, what happens to me. So before we were just calculating the unbalanced force. Uh, in other words, the net force. Now we're going to go a step further and include motion in the system. So in this case, let's say, um, yeah, let's say I'm being attacked by a velociraptor. If you've ever seen Jurassic Park. So uh, I am attacked. In this case, again, pulled by a velociraptor. Whoops, I can't spell. Let's see, Velociraptor. And we're going to say that the force of the raptor is going to be equal to, uh, let's say, um, yeah, 52 newtons to the right. Let's just say. Now we're going to say then that the force of friction because I'm going to be dragging along the ground. I'm going to be sort of dragged by this uh, velociraptor. So force of friction is going to be acting in the opposite direction to the motion. So in this case, I'm going to say, um, maybe make it 12 newtons to the left. So if I am initially at rest, how long will it take? Now let's say I want to travel somewhere. So take to travel uh, maybe one kilometer. Okay, so this can be a situation here. Now this is maybe not a very fun situation for me. Here's me on the ground. Uh, I'm not happy, and there's some sort of velociraptor now that's actually pulling me. I can't really draw very well, but um, some sort of, you know, dinosaur here with a long tail, and he's got really strong legs, and he's pulling on me, but he's pulling on me this way. So he's actually moving me with this force this way, a 52 newtons. 
but there's also friction, right? Because I'm dragging on the ground. So force of friction is, is uh, 12 newtons this way. So my 12 newtons should be a lot shorter than my 52 newtons. So I should make that force a lot bigger. So this is the situation here, okay? I'm being dragged on the ground uh, this way. The reason I know it's this way is because if I look at the net force, this force wins over that one. So first of all, in order to do anything else, I first need to figure out the net force, okay, the resultant force. So when these two vectors are added together, in this case, I'm going to add you know, 52 this way and a 12 newtons that way. Well, that means I'm going to subtract that one. So in that case, then F net is going to be 52 minus 12 newtons. So that means the result is 40 newtons to the right. That's my net force. This is important. Now, in the last example, uh, a few videos ago, I showed you that um, we, we, we just had stopped there. We just said, great, that's the resultant force. We're done. But that resultant force does something. That resultant force will make me accelerate because I have my force, my net force is related to the, my own mass, my mass, sorry, times uh, my acceleration. So I probably need to know my own mass. Let's assume that that was um, 75 kilograms. Let's say that's my mass here. So if I have a mass, I know a lot of people say I weigh 75 kilograms, but that's not technically correct. Um, because you could be weightless, and so there's some people that uh, talk about weight versus mass. Um, it's a good way to uh, be extra nerdy if someone says, how much do you weigh? Like, you mean what's my mass? Because my weight would be um, in newtons, but that's a bit nerdy. It's probably a good way to get uh, you know, teased as a nerd or uh, get a wedgie or something like that, because uh, you want to make sure that uh, you talk about mass, not weight. So in this case, if I know that my mass is 75 kilograms and I know the net force, well, now I can figure out the acceleration. So that means this becomes a UVAST question because I have acceleration. This is going to be a uniform acceleration. So in this case, then I could just write out UVAST. And I could actually figure these things out here. So my initial speed. Well, I said I'm initially at rest, so that's nice. Initial speed, u is zero. Remember, this is meters per second. V, my final speed, do I know that? I haven't been told that, so that's going to be question mark. Don't know. Uh, acceleration, do I know that? Well, I need to know that. See, so this is going to be something important here. Uh, we're going to put in 1,000 meters here, because that's what one kilometer is, and time is going to be what we want but we can actually plug in what goes here for A. Right? Because this is the case, I know that because F net equals MA, I can then say that my acceleration is going to be F net over M. So A equals F net divided by my mass, which in this case is going to be 12, uh, sorry, 40 newtons divided by my own mass of 75 kilograms if you know about the units of newtons, those are actually a kilogram meter per second squared and a kilogram over kilogram. Those cancel out. So thankfully, I get nice units. And I'm going to get, uh, what, 40 over 75. I'm just going to use my calculator. Whoa, I almost dropped it. So I'm going to do uh, 40 divided by 75, and I get 0 0.53 meters per second squared. That's important. So I'm going to take that value and put it in here. Now I'm accelerating to the right, so I'm going to leave my acceleration as positive. So I'm just going to put in 0 0.53. See, that was the key thing here. Acceleration came into there. I'm almost done now. Now it's just a matter of selecting an equation, one of my four equations of motion, that's going to be suitable for this situation. Um, so I need an equation that has a T in it and that doesn't have a V. And if you remember from your uh, four equations of motion, there's one actually that goes S equals UT plus one half AT squared. Well, my U is zero, right? My initial speed is zero, so that cancels out. And that means then if I want to get T, I'm going to do it algebraically first. So if I want T then, I'm just going to move this over here. So then uh, I have T, let's see here. Well, I'll do it slowly. 
I'll get rid of the 2. So the 2 comes up here. So I have 2s on that side. I also have to divide by a. So I'm going to divide that by a. And I have to take the square root of both sides. So that means t will be square root of 2s over a. If you're not sure about that, just take your time here, right? You want to get t on its own. So you first have to get rid of the, well, it doesn't matter in this case uh, if you do the half or the a first. I would do the half first. So I would get rid of the half by multiplying both sides by the 2, so that's 2s. Then I would get rid of the a by dividing by a, because that'll make it disappear off the right side, so I divide by a. And then I would take the square root of both sides, because that's how you get rid of a square. So in that case, I have 2s over a. Therefore, my time then is going to be square root of, technically it's plus or minus, remember, but um, I only care about positive time, because it's physics and real situations here. Although I don't really uh, hope that's a real situation. I don't want to meet a velociraptor. Well, they're extinct, so I'm probably okay. So I have uh, 2 times 1,000. Divide that by 0 0.53. And take the square root of that. And let's see what I get here. So I have 2 times 1,000. I'm going to divide that by 0.53. Take the square root. And I have, um, let's see, how many digits am I allowed to use? I've got 2 and I've got 2, so I can only use 2 to write my answer. So I'll say t equals, uh, let's see, that'll be 61 seconds. In other words, this will take me about a minute to accelerate uh, so much to where I've actually traveled uh, one kilometer. Now my acceleration is the same. Uh, so this is a neat example of uh, Newton's laws.